Welcome to Sage Leaf Group Tutorials. This is Kevin Taylor here. This channel is where we explore and teach basic techniques and skills in Revit. Today I'm going to go over in detail components, um, specifically how to make them and how I like to use them. So here on the screen you see just a little wall section of the house. Just a typical section. So in order to start, I'm going to create a call, a call out. Or let's just take this little region right here. Got that, and we'll zoom on in to that right there. Um, depending on how much you need to show, I'll usually do these details about three inches. Well, an inch and a half is probably good for these. The real close up ones that show flashing and all that, you should probably do about three inches. So, with detail components, Go to annotate and then component and then detail component. Um, DC is the shortcut for that. These are really useful. So if you notice over here, I have a whole bunch that are already pre made. Um, the break lines are very handy. They clean up your drawings pretty well. You can use the space bar to rotate it automatically if you're not familiar with that command. Here's just one example of detail components, but Say you wanted a 2x4. Um, so I currently, I already have one that's made for that. But let's say that you didn't. So in order to create one, you click the big R, click New, then we're going to create a family. I'm going to change this to Details. And if you go down to Detail Item, so when you create a new family and then create it as a detail item, and then we upload that, that'll be a detail component. You can also do the line based, and we'll cover that in another tutorial. So let's click Opened. Okay, we're going to zoom in. And then for here, you can create a masking region. If you want whatever this goes over, whatever this 2x4 goes over, if you want it to, to white it out, then you can do a masking region. So this is going to be a section cut. I'm going to highlight this and say you want heavy lines. I'm going to turn off this, these little three lines here. If you turn that off, it'll show you the thickness a little bit better. And some of these are very thick. So I'm going to go in and adjust the line thicknesses. So if you go to Manage, Additional Settings, Line Weights. Oops, I'm sorry. Additional Settings. And line styles, which we can't change. Never mind. So we're going to leave this on detail item. And then to create a new line, you go to create in line, or the shortcut is LI. Let's create two going across like that. Here we go. Oops. Before we do that, we actually need to finish the, the model line, or this is still the filled region. So I'm going to leave those as medium lines, actually. When we select OK, then it will show the line thickness. Now we can do LI for, or model line, ML, where we create, and then line. And then we'll draw the cross hatching here to indicate that it's being cut through. And then you'll do a file save as, family. And I'm going to save this real quick. I'm just going to save it here for now. We're going to call it 2 by 4 The naming, try to do things consistent for that. And I always like to make sure I change the backups to one so you don't have a million files. So when you can click Save, then you can load this into Project. And as you see, it's showing up here as well. So with the detail components, they'll show up in any two-dimensional view. Um, whichever it is, so you, you can use them in floor plans, um, sections, and details, whatever. So then you come back into here, and the one thing I forgot to change was the size of this. So we'll come back into the family editor, and edit the boundaries, and I am going to place dimensions here, and it says two and a half inches. So this needs to be an inch and a half. And this needs to be um, 3.5 inches. 
for it to be a two by four. Select OK. Um, those lines tend to be pretty heavy, so we're going to change those to light. See what that looks like. And for these, we're going to pull those a bit shorter. Bring them on in. If we're having troubles getting it to snap to the location, while still moving it around, if you press SI, it will snap to the intersection. There we go. Still don't necessarily like the line weight of that, so I'm going to come back in here. I'm just going to put that at medium. And then we can save that. Load and close into project. Override existing version and parameters. And then you've got that new detail component in there. These come in really handy. Um, when you need to use multiple of these, instead of copying and pasting, you can just go into Detail Component and you can place as many as you'd like all over the place. Of course, this is just random. But that is how you create detail components and then how you can use them um, in details or wall sections, however, however and wherever you'd like. If there is a tool or skill in Revit that you would like to see demonstrated, please leave a comment below.